Hello YouTube, I'm reposting this video because I attempted to trim the video in the YouTube studio and got corrupted. So I decided to re-edit and re-upload it. In this video I will show you how I had to redesign the seat for my backhoe and completely repair the air ride. It was a low cost project as I fabricated a lot of the parts myself. I have a lot of good fabrication technique to show you as well. I hope you will enjoy this video. I'm gonna cut and remove the rust and patch it up. This one I'm just gonna wire brush it and paint it. As you see, the seat was destroyed. It's rusted real bad. One side wasn't even attached to the base. The track that moved the seat forward and backward, they were rusted heavily and the seat actually was seized in this position. The seat base was welded into the swivel of the air ride. I think this was by design, so I had to cut and remove the seat from the air ride. As you see in this footage, there was wasp nest or several of them inside the air ride. I found two seats for Honda Odyssey van. They were close to the size I was looking for, so I bought them. I got good deal on them. I paid $80 for both of them. But the base for them uh, thick and the seat itself is thick, so I had to remove this uh, box or adapter blade that go from the floor to the air ride and just use flat blade. I removed the original bays that were attached to this seat. And I used it as a jig to build a new adapter to go from the air ride to this seat. I had to trim this angle to allow the seat locking handle to fit. As you see, I bolted two angles to the original base. I matched the whole pattern for the existing bolts. And then I bolted the other two angles to the air ride and welded both of these together.
as you see I'm using the original mount to mark the new floor plate I made the new floor plate out of 8 inch thick sheet metal I transfer all the marking and then I drill it and cut it This is plastic pushing is gone I'm going to make a new one out of glass This ball bearing all rusted. I bought a new one. They are 16 millimeter ball bearings. And when those got rusted, they dug a 16th inch groove all the way around. And when the seat used to swivel, it used to make scratching noise, very hard scratching noise what I'm thinking about doing is probably redrill those bushing so it will make a new track for them with smoother than this surface Because also it will have a play this way because you know we generated over here a 16th inch more tolerance doesn't play. To avoid this groove, I have to move this ball bearing holder a quarter inch to the center, closer to the center. I can go out because it will hit this over here. To make this quarter inch accurately moved on the other blade, what I did, I checked this one inch bolt to match this hole. And then what I did, I moved the table until I got the bit to center on the original hole. And then I kept practicing until I figure out a good spot where it's not going to interfere with existing holes or anything like that. And what I did, I marked it on the vise. And then I went ahead and drilled all of them. I kept turn it, line it to this mark and drill and all the way around. Uh, the original holes, they are 15 millimeter. I don't have any 15 millimeter drill bit. So what I did, I used this uni bit, which is uh, about five thousandths uh, less than 15 millimeter, which I like it better. Uh, this one over here, when I breastfed it in on the on the vise it will lock in place they won't go until I press put them in and I did lock the quill so I only go to the depth of that hole because if I keep going it's going to drill it bigger I cut this new piece and I drilled it 
to match the old hole and everything fit I took the marker and I mark from underneath to match the existing platform because I'm planning to weld the braces underneath so the seat won't bow in and out this blade won't bow in and out from the weight of the seat and I have plenty clearance over here to weld braces on the bottom without affecting anything I am going to fabricate new tracks for the air ride Before I remove the old track, I marked it with the grinder so I could weld the new track in the same place. When I bought the backhoe, I know I have to replace the seat and I have to fix the swivel, which I already did. But the air ride, when I took it apart, it's the bottom part was rusted real bad and the rollers were gone and there was a lot of rust. So I went ahead and took it apart. It was very easy. It didn't take but 10 minutes to take everything apart. Uh, pull this pin off and the other one on top and then uh, the piston was held with two small pins and everything came apart. There's a little bit of play in it from outside and it made the uh, grinding noise every time I press it in. So when I took it apart this is what I found. All the rollers gone. This is the best one of them. The other three they just destroyed these over here the bottom track 
the one to keep the bottom roller in place they were rusted heavily on the bottom side they were welded like this before I remove them what I did I took the cutting disc and I mark where the track was so I could weld the new one right in the same place the way they were welded is they have cut on this frame and they welded them from the bottom I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna weld these over here little bit and little bit over here because the weight it's you know pushing down so it's gonna be just fine the way I remove these I hit it with a cutting disc and remove this part it wasn't weld or anything on the back side and then I took the cutting disc and I made two slots and then I uh, blunge it from this side and it came off easy and then I took the flat disc and I just smoothed it up and then I sandblasted it and I sandblasted the pins over here and the top piece where uh, all the pins and roller will go the top tracks they fine so I just sandblasted them and then I'm going to sand them with the smooth sandpaper. The pins, the springs, and the piston, they're in good shape. I have two material to choose from to make these rollers that are available in my shop. This material, and I have this scrap piece of brass. I'm going to make it out of this. This should last way longer. I'm ready to machine the stock and bring it to size. It's going to be 0.864. This is what this measure, the best roller, and it will fit perfectly. The tracks, they measure uh, 7 8 of inch inside diameter. I used shims when I welded the this piece to this angle to make sure it stayed through while I'm welding it. And I had that give me about ten thousand plus play, which is fine. I don't want it to be tied, you know, in case dirt or something got in so it won't wedge it. The inside of this uh, the pin actually they measure 0 0.472 thousands. It is metric. I I didn't check to see what size that in metric. But the closest bit I have, it's 1532, which is gonna give me uh, 0 0.469. So I have to either sand or uh, uh, make a special uh, boring bar to drill it to size. Once I do that, then I'm gonna use the parting tool to part them. Before I do that, uh, one more thing I have to do. I have to make this chamfer. Uh, the original track, when they form them, uh, inside it has a uh, round, ang round angle. So this is what this is for. The one I made, I could just use a small chamfer if I need to, but I'm gonna make all of them match. I'm ready to work on it. Just using the 1532 drill bit, it's perfect. I don't have to sand it or anything. I like working with the brass because it's easy on the tool and it gives you very nice finish. I set this high speed cutting tool to match the old chamfer on the old roller. 
and I use that to cut into the blast. I set the parting tool to cut it to 0 0.650 inch thick to match the old roller. I regrinded the cutting tool like this so this part will come clean. I'm gonna have to clean this, chuck it back on the lathe and uh, machine this part out. ready to part the third tool. I'm running 890 RPM. I smooth the inside of the new rollers with this homemade contraption. I just slid this quarter inch rod and insert sandpaper and run it inside the new roller using a drill. The new rollers fit perfectly on the original shaft or pins. These rollers they came out nice. As you see they run free on the top track or the original track without any problem and they're very smooth. The new rollers running smooth on the pin. I tried them on the top track. There is perfect clearance between the pin and the roller and between the roller and the track. This way I make sure this will never get in a bind if there's something got between the roller and the track. These bushings also in bad shape. There is a lot of play when I inserted the pin, as you see, it's a play a lot and they look in bad shape. Half of the bushing actually gone. So I need to extract them to be able to measure them and make a new bushing. They came out easy. I just put shaft from here and put the hammer and came out. I'm going to clean the surface over here and take measurements so I make the bushings to size and then I'm gonna drill the center of it with the, the 1532 drill bit because they are same dimension 
the pins, uh, those pins. still have some material left on that shaft, on that glass shaft, so I should be able to make two more bushings. I clean those, they measure 0 0.550, the pins 0 0.470, so the wall thickness of the bushing is going to be very thin. I'm going to make the hole bigger with 5A drill bit, which is 0.625, that's going to give me a wall thickness of about 72,000. Uh, I can't drill them with bigger than 5A to make the wall thickness of the bushing thicker, because I will weak this part over here. So I'm just making the hole bigger, 75,000, which is not much. But this will add to the wall thickness of the bushing and make them last longer. I'm going to machine what I need to the same dimension as the other bushings. And I'm going to make the hole deeper. And then I machine each bushing to 5.8 and then I'll part it with a little bit lip on the end just like the original one. This is the depth I'm looking for. So I set down indicator. I could come back to the same spot. I have four new bearings made, one extra, this is the one I had to go and machine the back of it. These pushings, they're in good shape, they go here so I'm not going to bother making new ones. This is the leftover of that brass shaft. And these the new bushings. I'm going to press them using Loctite. And then I'm going to wrap all these parts and paint them. I cover the inside of the track with the sheet metal to protect it from welding spatter.
this piece of rubber need to go right here I'm ready to assemble the swivel part of the seat. I bought a new ball bearings to replace this rusted one. I went to the dealer, they want uh, about $70 for six ball bearings. They only 16 millimeters. I bought them on Amazon. I believe 10 of them, they were like $4 shipped. I also made a new bushing to go over here. They use thin plastic. This should last forever. I re drilled for this and I drilled them quarter inch toward the center of this plate. These the original holes and these the new holes for them. I did use some uh, super glue and I pressed this in because the hole was 5000 less than the plastic. So they in, they saw it. some grease look at this part number it must mean something Do it this way. I did also build some weld this latch because it was wore out. When I bought it, it sounded real rough when it turned. They only use this washer. I'm using two washers, so it will act as a bearing. And I also made this hole bigger, so... I needed bigger washer anyway. And it lock at 180 degree. One to drive the loader and one to drive the backhoe. Or the other way around. The swivel completely assembled. There is no play. It's latched by itself. The ball bearing right quarter inch away from that groove. The swivel is part of the air ride, so when I assemble the air ride, I have to bolt it to this before I put the rubber boot on the air ride. 
because this will be bolted from inside the air ride itself. The new bushings in, they painted. I removed the paint from the pins. I already greased the bushing in these pins. I inserted these bushings and I'm ready to assemble it. It should go like this. It was hard coming out. And the bushing was in bad shape. So with this tight bushing, it may be even more difficult. We'll see. I'll move this for a second. I did free the bearings over here. Luckily they had a lot of grease in them, so they were uh, the grease were dry and they didn't rust that bad. The paint is not bothering this, so I'm not going to sand it off. This should go like this. By the way, this is the first time I'm doing this, so... This came out nice. They have about 2,000 play on the shaft and they have about 5,000 play in the track. I didn't want to make them super tight just in case rust or something got there or dust, I don't want it to bind, I want to leave room for it to be free.
this has to go a certain way this will latch over here need one of these There's E-clip that goes right here. Next, I'm going to install the piston. I probably should put the piston first, but it will be fine. There you go. Okay, same thing, this shaft, it has to go this way. Perfect. No play. There was a lot of play when I started. When I took it apart the first time, there was a lot of play in it. This shaft over here doesn't get cut or bent 
or a clip it get one of these pins Next I'm going to install these rubber stops. The two small ones go in the front and the big one go in the back. Just some grease in the front of it. And it's in. right here next I need to install this gauge to show the pressure or uh, the weight of the operator so the seat will compensate for it this is the gauge parts this ribbon over here it will attach to the spring and go back and attach to the back side and show the operator weight this roller over here will ride on these dimples they uh, form on this plate over here and the ribbon will go on it like this and then this cover over here will only show the appropriate weight To install it, I'll put some grease over here on this one. And it's going to go like so. And this spring over here will attach to this like so and then go around <laughs> so now one more tension added the numbers will go up I forgot to mention about this uh, latch mechanism over here it meant to adjust the height of the seat the way it's adjusted you lift the seat up all the way until it slides like this and now when you lift it the first time this is the first height this is the medium height and this is all the way up this is 
the lowest setting. This is medium setting. And this is all the way up. Next, this is spacer. This over here, the swivel, this nut sticking, or the thread, the bolt itself, sticking up a little bit higher. Now these will latch into these when it's in driver position. Because it will make sense, you want to uh, fasten the seat as safe as possible while driving so the seat won't bounce off. And these uh, bolts will go from the bottom of the air ride. I bolted the swivel to the air ride, tidied all these bolts. This over here will add strength to the seat and they only engage when the swivel on the driving position or the driver uh, holding the steering wheel they made this this shorter than this one so it will go over the top of this one However, they won't do anything while it's in the backhoe position and the backhoe then it's stable so you don't care about this coming off. I inspected all the Eclipse, everything good, it greased everything. Again, added more grease to the joint, to the latch mechanism. It's clean, the bolt to the swivel tied and I'm ready to install the boot. I bought these in your bits, the uh, five millimeter. The original one, they were busted. They are good. I'll put more detail on the video to show their exact size. When I build a new floor, I designed this to be attached to this air ride and it will bolt to the floor with angles that go like this and bolt go through here, four of them and I welded six nuts on the air ride and what this does it will actually add more strength to the floor and to the air ride and it will close all these holes so insect won't get inside and build nest or hive or whatever This is going to be assembled to the floor of the tractor. 
I made this to be attached to the new seat that I bought. This whole battery over here match the new seat and this hole over here to uh, be attached or match the holes the original holes on the air ride. I have to shim it over here to avoid touching the release arm and I welded a piece in the middle over here to prevent the blade the swing plate over here from bowing because if it's only attached here it's gonna make it kind of springy so this go like this because this piece over here go higher than this surface so I had to shim it and then I have to notch it this way over here so the release handle for the seat to go forward and backward it will clear this because it's below the surface I'm not gonna bolt these two together because this is already too heavy to, ha to carry so I'm gonna install this on the backhoe and then I'm gonna install this to this and then the seat on top of it. It's very easy because I could reach all these bolts easily and tie them and uh, the seat is gonna be from the outside so it, it will be very easy. I cleaned the floor real good I used sandpaper grinder and I used the wire cup that's go on the grinder to remove all the rust and the loose paint. I cleaned it real good. I wiped it with acetone and then I primed it with the Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer. And then when the paint dried, I used the regular paint or oil-based paint, this one right here. And I mixed it with some hardener. I added little bit so the paint will dry real good. And I end up putting three coats of paint on it. And these parts dried and they were ready to be installed on the backhoe. The paint came out real nice. It's thick and it's hardened. And this will protect the floor of this backhoe for a very long time. This is the new floor blade that the seat is going to attach to. And this over here, all the clean part ready to be installed. I'm going to change that filter. And this filter over here before I put all these covers back on. I can't find the original hardware for this uh, air ride. I guess I lost it. They uh, have some type of bolts. They allen head and they're very thin. So this will clear that part over there. So what I did, I took these great bolts, grade five, and I machined them. I made two sizes to see which one fit? I'm gonna to try to use these. If they hit, I will use the other one. I had to use the thinnest one to clear everything. I'm ready to install the seat. The seat is very comfortable and real nice. However, after I install it, I think it's a little bit oversized for this machine. I will manage to use it. I have to adjust it in and out while uh, rotated. 
And like I said, it doesn't clear everything. This project was success. The air ride and the seat are very comfortable. The seat is adjustable. This is as far as go to the front. And this to the back. It swivel real nice. And it will lock by itself. The armrests are very comfortable. And it's in general very comfortable seat. I could drive it and use it for the backhoe or the loader and without fatiguing my back or my uh, legs. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please stay tuned for more. Thank you.